hi guys and welcome back to ask nk in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an amazing character directly in adobe fuse i'll go ahead and explain what adobe fuse is how it has been how long it has showed up and then we're going to export this directly to mixamo the adobe cloud rig this animate it and bring it down to mamose where we're going to do the shading lighting and finally rendering and if you're ready to learn something new today grab a coffee a popcorn whatever you can lay your hands on and let's begin fuse presently called adobe fuse was a program that was created by a web-based rigging and animation service company known as Mixamo. And this was one of the best things uh, within the time that was created because everyone could easily generate and use characters for their animation, pose for uh, poster designs, and also as base meshes for, you know, their sculpting. And as soon as this company was bought over by Adobe and, you know, just like uh, most other Adobe apps that have been bought, it was featured on the Creative Cloud service as beta and you know at a point in 2015 they teased an integration with uh, photoshop uh, which was fuse being used in photoshop and everyone was excited i was actually excited about it i was thinking maybe sooner than later this was going to make its way to after effects and you know you know make some work way more easier and just like every other app that has uh just like most apps not every app but just like most apps that have been bought by adobe this was just there in the library as beta for a while and essentially it is more like a forgotten tool in the adobe library and the mixamo service still works though and uh you know you can still get your models still go over to the mixamo site for free you can read your characters for free you can also you know attach and download uh, fbx motion capture files directly directly there so first and foremost once you open up this app what you're going to notice is it has a very simplified ui and everything is just at the right place so if you click on the file within this file you can import multiple stuff substance files characters and also clothing so hopefully now that they've acquired algorithmic they should be able to work on this that is if they have not totally killed this project and once you want to export you can export as obj now you might be asking how can you export as fbx so you can have all of those materials and all that and i'm going to explain to you guys how you can do that so we can start off by actually going ahead to create a character so i'm going to click here just click on the head and automatically it's going to generate a head a quick head for us here and with this head here what we can do is we can look at the wireframe and you can see how clean this is or you can look at the shaded version with the wireframe overlaid and you can see how clean this is now the cool thing with this app is that at any point in time you can select any part of the character and you can tweak this to fit into the base or into what you're trying to create all right so you can you know select any part and tweak this uh, thing and because it makes use of some kind of uh, fusing technology it simply means like the name goes fuse so it simply means that you can select any body parts or any body type and it's going to go ahead and fuse that body type with any section of the body that you've selected so like right now i have the head and i'm selecting this part and you can see we have that part like that and if you want to make changes to that i can go back to the torso and select a different part of the uh, character right so i can select a different torso that would blend in with the character the same thing is what i'm going to do i'm also going to go ahead and select the feet or legs and you know you can still go back at any point in time you know to change this depending on what you want to get so let's just quickly go ahead and add some arms to this character so i'll go over to the arm and add an extra arm for this character now if you add the arm and for some reason you think maybe some things are not proper some things are not in, uh some things are not proportional you can go ahead and scale this you know to fit into what you want at this point your character is ready to go especially if you want to use this for things like simulations and all that you can go ahead and just pick up this character from here export it as obj and use it for whatever thing you want if you're into sculpting then this might be the best time for you to just pick this character from here and use it for anything you want but if you want to use this for an animation and you don't want to go ahead and start making clothes and you know making props then of course you can jump into the part where that has to do with clothing and from this clothing section you can add clothes to this character 
if you're not comfortable with how the looks of this character uh, is let's say the skin tone and all of that stuff you can go over to the customize that means if you don't want to use these uh, sections to play with this if you don't want to tighten certain parts and maybe extrude certain parts you can use this section to make all these changes for what you want next thing which we're going to do is go over to clothing and we'll go ahead and add some clothes to this character i kind of like this clothes so i'm just going to drop that there and see how it holds up looks good you can scroll all the way down to find uh different forms of clothes that you can use for your character so maybe you can put you can put something like this so now we have this uh open sweat shirt up next thing which i will do is go over to the bottom and you can select any form or any kind of pants that you want so i'm picking up this other uh pant or maybe we should pick something like this and maybe something like this would be fine and I want you guys to see how the pant and every other thing just conforms to the character's body type. And if you go ahead and change the character's body type, you would still notice that automatically anything that you're selecting would also, you know, go ahead and conform with it. So maybe we should uh, just go ahead and pick something like this. And I would also like to give him a pair of shoes. So maybe we can give him a pair of uh, very nice sneakers, something like that and maybe for the hat we can give him a very nice beanie i think a, a nice beanie would be cool yeah so i think this character is looking cool already and maybe one more thing that we can do is uh we can choose to give a kind of beard variation to this character at this point this character is ready to go but if you want to add some beards let's say you're a fan of the beard gang stuff then of course you can choose a certain form of beard and you can assign this to your character at this point you have everything that you want you can ship this out to Maya and do your animation there ship it out to blender and do your animations directly there or maybe you can ship this directly to Mixamo and automatically rig it there so how we can do this is we need to have an account with Mixamo and right now since Mixamo is being bought by Adobe it simply means that you need to have an Adobe account for you to be able to do that now this account is free so you don't need any form of subscription and at any point in time you have uh, this all right let's say you're not comfortable with the texture there you can switch over and if you have substance files load up here you can use the substance files directly here to make changes you can also make the changes around here you can still come through and change the size right now we have this size set to uh, 1k map so there is just 1k map for basically everything so I can set this all the way up to 1k and it's going to recalculate that for me and let's look at the beanie and maybe set this up to 1k and maybe the full characters map itself let's see what it looks like and yes that is also set to 1k so you can go all the way up depending on what you want so everything that has to do with texturing gets to happen here everything that has to do with customization of the character gets to happen here clothing happens there and here all right so now we have our character ready what we can do is we can choose to send this to the mixamo cloud which is now adobe cloud and get it rigged directly there or another thing that we can do is we can export this as an obj with all the textures all the uvs and you can see that the geometry is extremely clean and very lightweight and just in case you want to check out um how much polygons you have here uh you can do that by clicking over to i guess view and you can see the polygon counts we have here so we have barely 12,000 polygons that has made up this entire character so you can see that this is extremely clean and what we can do now is we can ship this out for animation now speaking about this you can choose to export these as obj like i made mention earlier so you can choose to export this as obj and make sure you have all these things packed so what i'm going to do instead of just simply hitting animate and sending it directly to the adobe cloud what i can do is click over to file export this as an obj so i can share with you guys how you can also import your own obj into the mixamo or into the adobe mixamo cloud and be able to you know rig your characters directly there so now we have this here you can choose to say pack textures and uv which will give you one huge uv tile or you can just simply leave it this way and click on ok so with this there what you can do here is you need to be able to specify 
the name of the file because this is, is essentially going to create a folder and pack everything into the folder so i'm just going to type the name dude and put an underscore and hit save so what's going to happen is i'm going to get a folder with all the textures all the maps everything inside named dude so let's get this to export all right so now we have this exported the next thing which we need to do is to just fire up uh, Mixamo. so i have Mixamo opened here i've logged in and how you can get your stuff working is if you hit the upload button you can click over to this part and select your file so we're going to simply select the file which you created that exists in the folder called dude so pretty much you can see that inside this folder we have called dude we have the uh, materials we have uh, the model itself and you can see all the normal maps that comes with this stuff so i'm just going to click on the dude obj uh, file and simply hit on open and allow this to upload and once this is done it's going to take us to the page where we'll be able to automatically rig this character now the cool thing with this is it does not just rig your character and let it be it rigs your character and also gives you room for you to be able to you know test out other animations with it right so it gives you that uh, room for you to be able to play with this and see how it holds up for you so all we're doing right now is to just simply place the joints where the joints are supposed to be so we need to place this at the elbow let's be able to find that all right so let's say that's the elbow and let's guess here to be the knee maybe a little bit lower here should be the chin i think and uh we can go ahead and put the groin somewhere like here somewhere around there let's uh cross check this one more time i guess here should be the shoulder and i also think here should be the wrist so once we have this done you can choose depending on what you want to use this for so maybe in case you want to use this for a game and let's say you don't need fingers you can do that if you want to use uh just a three chain fingers you can do that as well but we're just going to go with a very standard one and click on next at this point we're going to allow the auto rig to calculate these things for us weight this properly and test it out so if for some reason you have some weighting issues you would be able to dictate these things here go back and fix it properly before you export it for whatever reason you want or maybe if you cannot spot them here and doing animation or doing testing these models you find these issues you can also get this thing out of here go to any of the dcc app you have and paint the weights exactly the way you want them to be so with this done the next thing which we're going to see is it's going to super load up the screen where we can test out the model and i guess you can see that directly here we're having this now the reason why we cannot see the texture here is simply because we imported the obj file let's check out those fingers and see if the fingers are holding up and yes the fingers are looking great So worthy to mention that they have various animation libraries you can you know go ahead and find or maybe play with so let's say you are looking for something that has to do with superhero and you select this it's going to go ahead and list out a couple of superhero uh, moves that you can use so let's uh, try something like this let me just go ahead and position this here all right so we can you know look at some models look at some motions and depending on what you want you can go ahead and use this for uh, your project all right so maybe we can pick the grab and slam nice so we have this and it looks super cool i guess this motion is from the spider-man so we can see that spider-man hand thing going on so at this point once you're done you can choose to download this and use it for what you want so i'm just going to hit the download button and because i would want to download this as fbx i'm just going to make it fbx and you can choose to download just the motion or you can just simply download this the way it is so we're just going to simply set this to 30 frames and simply hit download we'll give it just a moment for mixamo to calculate this 
and we'll be able to have this downloaded here all right now that we're done with mixamo the next thing which we need to do is to take this file directly from here into mamoset that is where we're going to shade light and probably render this so what we're going to do is here i have mamoset opened and i'm going to just simply drag in this file right here so this file is loaded directly into Mamoset and we're going to shade and texture this from here. Now I know a lot of people will be complaining and saying that how do I work with things like this? It is low poly, you cannot work with this. You have to subdivide before you bring it in. I'm going to share with you guys how you can, you know, go ahead and tessellate this and make it much more easier for you to work with so the first things which you're going to do is to create materials for almost every single thing the skin and the eyes have exactly one material set like if we come through to the folder where we have you can see that if i just punch this up you can see we have the eyes here we have this we have the teeth all of these things are inside one material i'm just going to go ahead and close that now since we have this there the other things are what we're just going to go ahead and work for so for this i need to create a a material for this a material for this a material for this one this and here so for the beanie the beard the top the pants and also for the shoe so let's just go ahead and create multiple materials and i'll also go ahead and name them so i will start off with the beanie so i'm going to name this the beanie uh next one which i will name would be the beards i'm also going to simply name this as the shirts I'll name the next one as the pants and shoe and finally we're going to just simply name skin okay so now I have this done the next thing which I'm going to do is to assign all of these things to their individual objects and since we have these textures here it's going to be very easy for us to just simply drag and drop them onto the palettes where they are so your diffuse texture goes to the albedo so we can see that here our character still looks shiny and i'm also going to take the normal map and plug it directly where the normal map should be all right so i have the normal there and probably you're going to notice that it's a bit too shiny now the reason why this is shiny is because we have the metalness turned on so i'm just going to switch this instead of saying metalness i'm going to change this to specular and also for the roughness, instead of having roughness, I'll change it to gloss because the textures which we have is gloss and specular. So I'm just going to pick up the gloss and drop the gloss where it should be and take the specular and drop the specular where it should be. So I'll do the same thing for all the other objects. all right so now we have this uh, entirely set up the next thing which i'm going to do is just simply make a double copy of the skin so i'll explain to you guys why so i'm having this selected i'm just going to click here to make a double copy and i'm going to change this and call it the eye now the reason why i'm doing this is because i want to add subsurface to the skin and i don't want it to affect the eye so for this i'm just going to pick this eye and drop it directly onto this uh, object so now i have dropped this here I still don't want any of these things to affect the eye so I'm just going to uh, set all of these things to to uh, none for now uh, let's just uh, do this and also for the specular I'm turning this off and I'm also turning this off so I have exactly this eye the way I want it to be for parts that has to do with the surface where I had that normal earlier we can go ahead and pick up this same normal because you can see if I just punch this up, you will see that this is a space for the eyes. So I can pick that normal all the way up and, you know, plug this normal back into this space for the eye. Uh, depending on what your model looks like, you can switch this to be either uh, object space or, you know, you can make it a uh, tangent space. So depending on what you're going for and what your model looks like. So now I have this. Other things that you might uh, find as a problem is within this part, you can see that we have this hair here and how we can make this hair look cool or how we can make it look cool. I think it's I, I need to turn this off. So how we can make this hair look cool is uh, we can choose to double click this and go over to this part where we have transparency and change this to cut out. 
I have the eyelashes here. So what I can do is I can come over to transparency and change this to cutout. But right now I don't like how this looks. I mean, for this particular one, for this particular instance. So instead of making it cut out, I'm going to make it a detail. So it looks more like this, All right? So it looks more like that. So next thing which we need to do is to go ahead and fix this uh, thingy that causes this to look like this. Because you can notice that by default we're having this uh, low poly uh, sort of thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click just to make that selection there. Go over to this part we have subdivision and select the PN triangles. So with PN triangles selected, you can see smoothing is turned all the way on and we have a very nice subdivision going on there. Next thing I'm going to do the same for this. So just make a double click subdivision pn triangles and there you go let's take a look at the skin and i think the skin is fine except people want to go ahead and make more i think the shoes are also okay i also think the pants are fine but uh, there's no harm in trial so let's just play with this and see all right so it looks a bit more cool now so we can simply do the same thing for for the rest of them and i think also for the shoe as well so cool so now we have this done everything looks perfectly fine let's play back our animation just to confirm that everything's working so because uh marmoset actually accepts fbx right so it comes in with the animation baked in already so you can see that we have our animation running properly for us cool things cool things next thing is to drop up a ground plane i'm just going to simply go over to object add and simply drop a ground plane so let's actually find a shadow catcher that should act like the ground plane so that should uh, actually catch any shadow that will drop in next thing i'm going to simply do is to drop a simple light so we can throw in a light from here so let's just rotate this to this point and you know take it all the way up and i'm also going to make another copy of this light so i'm just going to drop this towards this angle all right so I'm just going to drop this towards this angle, something like that. Let's just position this properly. Yeah, so something like this looks good. So one more thing which I said I was going to do for this is to talk about the skin. Now, if you remember in a previous tutorial which we did, we said once you're importing your object, you need to make sure of the measurements you're using. So this presently is in meters and you can see how small this character looks. You can see how the scene scaling looks. So this is sh this should be our default scene scale. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the entire thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to centimeter and also set my scene to centimeter. Why I'm setting this to centimeter is so that once I want to start doing the subsurface, it would be easier for light to bounce around our object. So right now with this turned on, I want to just simply zoom in so that you guys can see a significant difference. Our subsurface is set to one. If I push it all the way, this is what we have. And if I start pushing the subsurface inwards, you can see that we're having some uh, light passing through our object. So I have that there. I can also go ahead and play with the translucency just a little bit and maybe increase the depth at which light should pass through the entire object as it is. So that is how you can add subsurface to your characters, especially if they have parts that you want them to reflect that sort of uh, uh, light or that sort of soft surface feel. I might just punch up the uh, fuzzy a bit. So you, if I zoom in, you can see a significant difference. So I'm turning this down and you can see that. So if I start pushing this all the way up, you notice that it has uh, some sort of uh, fuzzy feel going around the entire object. So I will just drop this a little bit low, maybe about a point like this. Maybe something like this is good. Also, since we're still working with this, uh, next thing which I would love to do is to drop in another light. So I'm just going to drop in another light somewhere from here. From the side like that. I also think we need a front facing light. So I might just drop in another light, but this time I'll change it to uh, an Omni light. So it's a one, 
So it's a, an omnidirectional light. Now we have this going on. If I go ahead and press the playback button, you can see we have our object, our character actually doing the, the fight. All right. And you can tell that this looks really, really cool, especially now that it has all of the textures and everything working. So this is basically how you can get your model directly from here. You can see how we all started. So this is how you can get your model directly from here with all the inner workings from this part and, you know, bring them, bring it right into here. So uh, I would like to know what you guys think about this. If you want to go ahead and finalize this object by uh, doing a simple render, of course, you can do that by, you know, attaching an initial camera first. And with that camera there, you can also uh, just make sure that you're making use of a camera, the camera you want to render with. Normally, it's set to uh, main camera, but I'm going to just simply use camera one. And with camera one selected, I can go over to the render and turn on G the and turn on the GI and maybe increase the uh, voxel for the resolution so you can see what I have here. At any point in time, you can also turn this down depending on how uh, fast or how slow your computer memory is. So you can always, always turn this down depending on what you want. So I'm just going to turn this off so we can see that there. And also other things that you may also want to do is within this part where you have your anti-aliasing, it's always cool to keep it up this way. The resolution, you could choose to double the resolution if you want. If you want to see the wireframe of your character, you can turn this up and you know you can blow out the wireframe depending on what you want. All right. So these are ways and these are things that you can do to actually uh, make your model look a bit more nicer. A bit more nicer and since we're working with the initial camera within the camera settings here you can also choose to add a couple of things in the, the camera settings so for this you can also uh, drop in some ab chromatic aberration stuff like that and yeah i kind of like chromatic aberration guys so yeah you can drop things like this and you know use this for whatever thing that you want so this is how you can uh, essentially get your models directly from fuse or from anywhere take it over to mixamo do the rigging there and bring it directly here and render simple straightforward and very very nice stuff if you're bothered about the background, you can always, always change the background whenever you or however you want it to look. So I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can just hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can tell me about these things in the comment section. And I'll be very excited to do these videos for you guys. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial, updates, news, tips or tricks, reviews, things like this. Peace.